causes of global warming. Earth's climate has always been in a state of flux, according to data gleaned from the geological record, ice core samples and other sources. However, since the Industrial Revolution began in the late 1700s, the world's climate has been changing in a rapid and unprecedented way. The average global temperature has risen 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit, 0.8 degrees Celsius, since 1880, according to NASA. Temperatures are projected to rise another 2 degrees to 11.5 degrees Fahrenheit, 1.13 degrees to 6.42 degrees Celsius, over the next 100 years, according to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA. Some have confused global warming as persistent, increasing warmth. While the global temperature is increasing, it may not translate to a higher temperature in an individual location. Global warming is important because it is so persistent and global in scale, and because it brings more extreme events such as heat waves, not because it makes every place warm all the time. It doesn't do that, said atmospheric scientist Adam Sobel, author of Storm Surge, Hurricane Sandy, Our Changing Climate, An Extreme Weather of the Past and Future, Harper Wave, 2014. In addition to heat waves, the increase in global temperature is having a massive effect on the environment, such as melting polar ice caps, raising the sea level and fueling dangerous and severe weather patterns. Understanding the causes of global warming is the first step to curbing its effects. The greenhouse effect, Earth's climate is the result of a balance between the amount of incoming energy from the sun and energy being radiated out into space. Incoming solar radiation strikes Earth's atmosphere in the form of visible light, plus ultraviolet and infrared radiation, which are invisible to the human eye, according to NASA's Earth Observatory. Ultraviolet UV, radiation has a higher energy level than visible light, and infrared radiation has a lower energy level. Some of the sun's incoming radiation is absorbed by the atmosphere, the oceans and the surface of the Earth. Much of it, however, is reflected out to space as low-energy infrared radiation. For Earth's temperature to remain stable, the amount of incoming solar radiation should be roughly equal to the amount of relieving the atmosphere. According to NASA satellite measurements, the atmosphere radiates thermal energy equivalent to 59% of the incoming solar energy. As Earth's atmosphere changes, however, the amount of infrared radiation leaving the atmosphere also changes. Since the Industrial Revolution, the burning of fossil fuels such as coal, oil and gasoline have greatly increased the amount of carbon dioxide CO2, in the atmosphere, according to NASA's Earth Observatory. Before the Industrial Revolution, during warm interglacial periods, the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere hovered around 280 parts per million ppm. A NASA graph shows the rapid increase in this greenhouse gas since then. In 2013, CO2 hit 400 parts per million for the first time. In April 2017, the concentration hit 410 parts per million for the first time in recorded history. The director of the Scripps Institution of Oceanography CO2 Group wrote at the time that levels are expected to hit 450 parts per million by 2035, unless greenhouse gas emissions drop significantly. Along with other gases like methane and nitrous oxide, CO2 acts like a blanket, absorbing infrared radiation and preventing it from leaving the atmosphere. The net effect causes the gradual heating of Earth's atmosphere and surface. Related, effects of global warming, this is called the greenhouse effect because a similar process occurs in a greenhouse. Relatively high energy UV and visible radiation penetrate the glass walls and roof of a greenhouse, but weaker it can't pass through the glass. The trapped infrared keeps the greenhouse warm, even in the coldest winter weather.